Hello, and welcome to Agrosa Physics. Today is day 141, and what I'd like to do today is continue our discussion of waves. We're going to review some multiple choice questions that you would deal with with the wave section. I hope that you have already solved these problems, and we're going to check your work now. I'm going to show you the solutions to each of them, and you can check your answers. Thank you. All right, on to the waves review. What we have is a Snell's Law problem where there is a ray of light going from air, which is an index of 1, into a new material. We know that it turns toward the normal, so it has to have a higher index, and we're looking for the index of the second material. We're going to use Snell's Law, n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2, 1 sine of 45 equals n2 sine 30. We have to make sure we're in degrees in our calculator, but it's going to be sine of 45 divided by the sine of 30. We get 1.41, oh, n2, 1.41, choice 3. All right, for number 2. We have a wave with a number of different points, something like that, A all the way to E. It's asking which points are in phase. And to be in phase, you need to be doing the same thing at the same time. A moves down, C moves down. However, oh, actually, A is going to move up because it's not at the top and it's what's behind it but it looks like B and E here are going to be doing the same thing at the same time and they're the same displacement away so it's choice four all right let's look at three in a vacuum light with a frequency of five times ten to the fourteen Hertz has a wavelength of well our equation for speed of light V equals F lambda 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second equals 5e14 lambda. And the 14 is, of course, hertz. So 3e8 divided by 5e14, 6 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. Choice 2. And for number 4, we have another wave and it's given us the distance between sections on the wave itself and it looks like it's going from the crest to the trough of this one so that's going to be one and a half wavelengths and I wrote 6.0 meters so 6.0 meters is 1.5 wavelengths. So 6 divided by 1.5 is the wavelength is 4 meters. Now it says the frequency is 2 hertz. And it wants us to find the speed. And we know V equals F lambda. 2 times 4, 8 meters per second. Choice 3. All right, number 5. What we have is another wave where we're looking at what's in phase. It looks like A and D here are in phase. And we have C, which is the same height, but C is moving down, whereas A and D are moving upward because it's what's behind the wave that matters. So A and D in phase. And that's going to be choice three. All right, number six. Time required for light to travel a distance of 1.5 to the 11 meters. So speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And we have a distance, 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. This is strictly V equals D over T. So I'm going to do 1.5 E11 divided by 3 E8. And it's going to be 500 seconds. 
and that's going to be choice one. All right, number seven. Frequency of light is 5 times 10 to the 14. What's the period? Well, time and frequency are indirectly related. So T is 1 over F, 5 times 10 to the 14 hertz. So if I do 5E14, X to the negative 1, it'll be 2 times 10 to the negative 15 uh, seconds. And that's choice two. All right, now eight. Product of a wave's frequency and its period. All right, so if I multiply time times one over time, which is frequency, the times cancel, I'm left with one, which happens to be choice one. The answer is O-N-E one, and it's choice one. All right, number nine. What we're looking at here is light traveling from air into flint glass. And it asks us what line is going to show the correct refracted ray. Is it 1, 2, or 3? Now, because the index of refraction for air and flint glass are different, flint glass is 1.66 and air is 1, it will refract. We're going from less to more dense, so the angle will be smaller. So 2 is definitely out, and you're left with either it turns away or toward the normal. Less, more, less. The angle is going to be smaller, so it's going to be choice three. All right, number 10. We have a number of diagrams showing different reflected and refracted rays. Now remember, light will ref reflect, refract, and absorb at every boundary, and our original is coming in at 40 degrees and it's going from air into water 1 to 1.33 now the reflected ray is going to bounce off the surface of the water and the refracted ray is going to turn toward the normal so this angle is going to be less than 40 degrees so which one's going to show that it looks like choice three the reason it's not choice four is because when they drew choice four, they had this at a smaller angle than the original incident. So the reflected ray has to be the same angle, and that's why it's choice three. All right, 11. Ray of light is incident on a block of lucite at an angle of 60 degrees. So 60, air, Lucite and looking at the chart, it's 1.5. So we do n1 sine theta 1, n2 sine theta 2, 1 sine 60 equals 1.5 sine theta 2. So we're going to do sine of 60 times 1, 0.866 divided by 1 1.5, 0 0.577. Second sign, second answer, 35.3 degrees. And that's going to be choice one. All right, on to 12. Sound wave produced by a trumpet has a frequency of 440 hertz and is traveling through air at STP. So if I look at my chart, I'm going to see the speed of sound in air at STP is 331 meters per second. And I want to know the distance between successive compressions in the sound wave, which is fancy speak for wavelength. So you need to know that successive compressions means we're going to have a full wave. So I'm going to do 331 divided by 440. And I'm going to get a wavelength of 0.75 meters. Choice two. All right, a sound wave has a wavelength of 5.5 meters as it travels through air at STP, so V is 331 meters per second. What is the wavelength of this sound in a medium where its speed is 30, 1324 meters per second? So 
speed to 1324 meters per second. Now what we have to remember is that the frequency of a wave stays constant even when it's in a new material. So we're going to have to find the new frequency or the old frequency and then use that to find the new wavelength. We could also set up a proportion, but I'm going to do it this way. 331 equals F times 5.5. So 331 divided by 5.5, 60 hertz. And if I use that frequency with my new speed, so 1324 equals 60 times wavelength. So 1324 divided by answer, I'm going to get the wavelength of 22 meters. You could also see the, the ratio between 1324 divided by 331 and it's four times bigger or faster so the wavelength would be four times larger so 5.5 .5 times 4 is also 22 and that's choice 4. Alright now 14 is a ray diagram where we have light coming in and bouncing off and we want to know the angle of reflection problem is they give you 65 here so what you have to do is 90 minus 65 and realize that this is 25 degrees and that means that angle there is also going to be 25 which is what we're looking for so that's choice one that's the law of reflection alright 15 we have two waves traveling effectively on top of one another we have the solid wave and then we have this dotted line type wave. And it's asking us, what is the type of interaction between these waves um, that we're looking at? And if these two interact together, they're going to make a bigger wave at each spot. So we call that constructive interference. And that's choice two. All right, 16. Which color of light has a wavelength of 5 times 10 to the negative 7 meters in air? Well, I'm going to need the frequency because our reference table lists everything with frequencies. So V equals F lambda. 3 times 10 to the 8 equals F times 5 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. 3E8 divided by 5E negative 7. 6e14, so 6 times 10 to the 14 hertz. And if I look at my chart, we're in the green zone. So that's green light. And green is choice two. All right, 17. We have a frequency of 2 times 10 to the 6 hertz. And we have a distance of 7.3 times 10 to the 10 meters. And that's a spaceship around Mars sending a sound, uh, I'm sorry, a radio wave back to Earth. How much time does it take the radio wave to travel to the spaceship? Now the speed, since it is radio, is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And the frequency does not determine the speed. It's the material it travels in. So any frequency wave will still travel at the speed of light. So basically we're doing V equals D over T. 3 times 10 to the 8 equals 7.3 E10 over T. And if we divide 7.3 E10 divided by 3 E8, we get 243.3 seconds. So that's choice 2. All right, 18. We have a light ray traveling from 30 to 60 degrees. 30, 60. We have N here and we have air, which is 1. So it's going to just be Snell's law. N1 sine theta 1, N2 sine theta 2. So N1 is my unknown. So I'm going to do 30 here, 1, 60 here. So, sine of 60 divided by sine of 30 
is 1.73, which is choice three. All right, 19. A ray of light is incident on a block of lucite at 60 degrees from the normal. So we have this, we have 60. It's in air, lucite's 1.5. We want to find the angle of refraction. This problem sounds familiar. And that's because it is. So you have 1 sine 60 divided by sine, we divided by 1.5. Second sign, second answer, 35 again. Well, we're at least consistent. All right, number 20. We have an electromagnetic wave with a frequency of 6 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Which type of electromagnetic wave does this segment in the diagram represent? All right, so we know that it has a frequency of 6 times 10 to the 14 hertz. So if we look at our chart, all the other information is extraneous. 6 times 10 to the 14. Well, that's green light again. So it has to be visible light. Choice 2. All right, on to 21. What we have is a ray of light at 30 degrees traveling from crown glass, which has a 1.52 index into diamond, which has a 2.42 index. So we're going from less to more, so the angle is going to get smaller. And ask for the angle of refraction. So this is a standard Snell's law. N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. We're going to plug in 1.52 sine 30 equals 2.42 sine theta 2. So 1.52 times the sine of 30 equals, divided by 2.42, we get 0.314, but we have to do second sine, second answer, and we have 18 degrees. Choice two. 22. All right. We have a group of people playing double dutch, and we have a 4.3 meter distance between the people. Now, this is half a wavelength. And it asks for what's the wavelength. So we have to double it. So it's going to be 8.6 meters, or choice 4. Alright, 23. What's the period of a periodic wave that has a frequency of 60 hertz? So the frequency is 60. And we want to find the time period, which we know is 1 over frequency. So 60 x to the negative 1, time is 0 0.0167 seconds. And they're using scientific notation, so it's 1.7 times 10 to the negative 2 seconds. Choice 1. All right, 24. Graph shows displacement versus time as it travels through a medium. What's the frequency? And what we're going to look for is how many waveforms do we see? And it looks like we see two waveforms. So frequency is cycles, which is two. Two cycles over 0 0.1 seconds. So two divided by 0.1 is 20 hertz. Choice two. All right, 25. What we have is a diagram with a number of waveforms. One, two, three. So there are three waves. One, two, three. One, two, three. And it's in six meters. So that means the wavelength is going to be two meters. And the frequency is given eight hertz. What's the speed? So V equals F lambda. Frequency times lambda, 16 meters per second. Choice two, 26. All right, we have two waves, and they're doing the same thing, but one looks like it's higher than the other. So since they go forward at the same amount, that's the same wavelength. They're in the same medium, so they have the same speed. 
they're also oscillating the same frequency. So the only difference is going to be the amplitude. And that's because they have different heights. All right, 27. Which one has amplitude and wavelength labeled correctly? Now, if I just draw a waveform, wavelength is here. Amplitude is either there or down here. It's the height. So which one shows something to that effect? One does not. Two does not. Three does. Four does not. So it's choice three. All right, 28. We have a police car, and it's producing a sound with a frequency of 680 hertz. The speed of sound is 340 in this case. Sound waves are in phase at point A and B. The distance between the points could be. So if they're in phase, that means you are a whole multiple of wavelengths away. So the two ones or the two twos could both be in phase in that case. So the only thing that's true about successive points or points in phase is that they're a wavelength apart. So it has to be a whole number, and that means the only one is choice one. All right, 29. 29 shows another waveform, and we have point A and B. And it asks, how many wavelengths separate A and B? So if I trace it, it's one here and a half. So it's going to be choice two, 1.5 wavelengths apart. All right, number 30. We have light traveling from lucite into air. But it doesn't ask about the angle of refraction. It says, what's the speed of light and lucite? And that's back to our index of refraction equation. Lucite is 1.5, C is 3 times 10 to the 8, and we're looking for V. So if I get my calculator, we're going to do 3.8 divided by 1.5. So 3.8, oh, I'm sorry, 3.0, 3E8 divided by 1.5, I'm going to get 2 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And that's going to be choice 2. Now, if we look, 3 and 4 are out of bounds anyway, because if you go in Lucite, you have to slow down. And 4.5 is faster than the universal speed, which is 3 times 10 to the 8, so that's impossible as well. All right, 31, critical angle. Now, when you have critical angle, it means that light comes in, hits a material trying to go into air, and it just goes along the surface. So you have a 90-degree refraction. So you use Snell's law, N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. And N1 is what you're looking for. Sine 44, that's our critical angle. N2 is air sine of 90. So 1 divided by the sine of 44 gets us 1.44 as our index, which is 3. And now 32. We're looking for points that are out of phase. And out of phase means they are half a wavelength apart. So if I look, we have A and D. Well, they're not half a wavelength apart. B and F, they are a full wavelength apart. D and F, D was here, F was here. They're actually half a wavelength. So they're out of phase. So that's probably our answer, choice three. But let's check D and H. And if we continue this, H was here. So that's a wavelength apart. So the answer is D to F, choice three. All right, 33. We have two waves interfere, and they produce a standing wave. So it's asking how far apart are two nodes? And two nodes are half a wavelength apart. And that's just choice three. 34. What's the period of a water wave if four complete waves pass a fixed point in 10 seconds? 
So we have cycles, which is 4, over seconds, which is 10. So frequency is 4 over 10, so 0 0.4 hertz. But we're not looking for frequency, we're looking for time period. So T is 1 over F. So if we do 0.4 and we invert it, x to the negative 1, we get 2.5 seconds. And that's choice three. And finally, we have 35. We have another graph. And we're looking for, so they have, we have two waveforms. One looks like this. And one looks like this. And we want to know the superposition of the waves produces the greatest positive displacement from its rest position at point. Is it point A, B, C, or D? Positive displacement. So we want to have the biggest upward motion. So it looks like the biggest one, you're going to have a 1 plus a 1, so it's 2. 2 minus 1 for this one, which is 1. 1 minus 2, negative 1, and then negative 2. So choice A is going to get you the greatest positive displacement. That's number 1. And that's it for the waves reviews.